Hey, it's me, Alex from Beverage Creations. I partnered with Tools Today to bring you this video on how I built this solid walnut side table with a top that was cut on the CNC and it sits on splay legs with some exposed joinery at the top. I started this project by cutting down the walnut lumber to more manageable sizes with the Amana Prestige PR1040C General Purpose Blade at the table saw. And I love this blade because it always gives me really clean and precise cuts every single time. So once I have all the pieces I needed for the tabletop, I went over to my jointer to start flattening one face and square up one of the edges for all of these work pieces. And then I brought them down to their final thicknesses of about one inch at my planer. And finally, I squared up the last edge at the table saw before I brought them over to my workbench to finally edge glue them together to make a large panel for the tabletop. If you love this type of content, be sure to subscribe to our channel and go ahead and hit that bell so that you'll be notified on all of the new videos when they're released. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Tools Today. When doing panel glue ups, I usually apply just enough pressure on the clamps until I see a thin line of glue squeeze out. I find that any further tightening of the clamps will just cause the panels to bow. And another way to prevent the board from bowing is to apply clamps both on top and the bottom like what I'm doing here. And after letting the panel sit for a couple hours, it's time to cut the tabletop at my CNC. And for this, I started with the Amano quarter inch spectra coated spiral bit and a 3D adaptive clearing tool pad to help clear out the bulk of the material, as well as to rough out the curvature around the outer edge of the tabletop. And once that was done, I swapped over to the Amana Spectra coated 1 8 inch radius ball nose bit and a 3D parallel pass to help clear out the material that was left over from the previous operation. And then clear up those staircase shapes around the edges to reveal the smooth curvature along the outer edge of the tabletop. And lastly, I switched back to the quarter inch spectra coated spiral bit that I used on the first operation in order to cut out the circular profile of the tabletop. And, and I gotta say, I love this spectra line of bits because they have this nano composite coating to help dissipate heat and keep the bits sharp for a much longer period of time. Once the tabletop was done carving, I began work on the legs, and I started by cutting a 5 degree angle on both ends of the workpiece, which is the amount of lean that the legs will have. And after that, I swapped over to the Amano Prestige 8 inch dado set to start cutting the T-bridle joints between the legs and the stretchers. And I used the stop block on the miter gauge to set the top and bottom shoulders of the tenon, which I removed in the first two passes. And then I came back with a third pass to help clear out the rest of the material. And this was just for one side of the tenon, and I did this on all three legs before I flipped the workpiece around and used the same method to clear out the material on the other side of the tenon. And once I've done that for all three pieces, I laid out the inside taper of these legs, which went from 3 inches on top to 1 inch on the bottom, and then I swapped back over to the Amana Prestige General Purpose Blade to make that cut with the help of a tapering jig. But we're not done yet. There's just a few more small details that still needed to be worked out, which will both require a tenoning jig to hold the leg up vertically like this. One cut is to remove the angle corner in the tenon portion, which will allow cutting the mortise much easier in the stretcher later on. And then I swap back to my dado set to remove a chunk of material from the top of the leg. And the reason is once all the legs are put together, this is what's going to create the recess for the tabletop to sit into, which you're going to see later on in the build. And you know, I guess I still haven't had enough fun swapping between blades because I once again went back to my Amana Prestige General Purpose Blade in order to cut a bevel along the top edge of the leg just to add a little bit of flair. Now since the edges are really sharp, I used my Amana 45 degree chamfer bit at my router table to soften those up and also to match the bevel that I just added in the previous step. And of course you can use a roundover bit as well, but I'm partial to bevels. Now once the legs are done, I begin to work on the stretcher and each piece will receive two 60 degree cuts on one of the ends where they're going to be joined together. And you know, there are a few ways to go about joining these. I ended up going with dominoes, but dowels would work just as well here. Now, once I cut all the mortises for those dominoes, I put the stretchers together without any glue and place the assembly in the middle of the tabletop. And then I place the legs on the stretchers so that I could mark the depth of the mortises as well as the final length of those stretchers. Now, 
Now, since the stretchers will extend past the leg by about three quarters of an inch, the mortise is already quite deep. So the first operation was to cut the stretchers down to their final lengths. And even after that, the mortise was still almost three inches deep, which is just about the maximum a 10 inch saw blade can cut on most table saws. So that's why I stayed with the general purpose blade to cut that mortise. Now I made one pass to remove the material from one side of the mortise and then flip the leg over to make the second pass. And this ensures that the mortise will be centered on this part. And finally, I came back with a third pass to clear things out in the middle. And you know, at this point, everything is pretty much done, but I decided to put a couple of chamfers on the ends of the stretchers just to match the bevels that we cut in the legs previously. And after that last operation, it's finally time for glue up, which I started with the stretchers. I made sure to get plenty of glue into the mortises as well as to have all of the glue surfaces covered. And I brought them together and clamped them up. Now I used some calls in the corners here to help keep the clamping pressure in line with the stretchers. And once the glue has had some time to cure, I applied a generous amount of glue to the tendon of the legs and slid that right into the mortise of the stretchers, which as you can see, was a really nice snug fit. So I probably didn't really need to add clamps to this joint, but since I'm gonna use the Timberline 3 quarter inch Forstner bit to cut recesses for the figure eight clips to assemble the tabletop, I didn't want anything to move before the glue cured. And anyway, I cut two recesses on each stretcher and then moved on the sanding, starting with 150 grit and moved all the way to 220 grit before finally applying finish to bring out the beautiful and contrasty colors of the walnut I used. And once the finish has cured, I attached the figure eight clips to the leg assembly, flipped everything over, and made sure everything was centered and attached the other end of the clips to the tabletop to finish this side table. Now I am super happy with the way this little side table turned out. This guy is the perfect size for this corner of my office, where I like to sit curled up with a drink and a good book. But anyway, I hope you guys really like this project, and uh, we'll catch you guys in the next one. Hey, if you guys like this video, subscribe below and click over here for more great videos. <laughs>